Okay, we're speaking about the issue of immortality. Hold on, let me... Because it is a legit issue that needs to be addressed. Like... I'm sure that somewhere out there it's being discussed right now, but... I want to do it in a thorough way. And part of the thing I realize is that I'm not the kind of guy that can get a really concise message, so I have to compensate for that by being extremely deep so you can, like, understand and get something substantial. Because if I do, like, something concise and simple, a dichotomy-esque video, it's, it's not going to work. That's not how it works for me. Anyway, like... I'm not talking about whether or not immortality is possible. I'm talking about its implications on society. Like, um, if we were to find a way to stop aging and things of this nature, where you can have people that are in their same physical condition that they have when they're in their 20s, or early 30s, whatever your prime is, then there you go. Now, there's like two things. There's worst case scenario and there's best case scenario. Like, I don't know which one is a more realistic scenario. One's like kind of a reflection on the problems we have now and the other is like an optimistic perspective so like maybe neither perspective is what is actual possible actually possible or maybe some societies will be affected by worst case scenario and some will be affected by best case scenario so it's like I gotta think about it that way well Worst case scenario is John Lennon's Imagine, where basically the society that we built, which we didn't build on fear of death, but the desire to reproduce. Basically, death and our horniness has basically created our own version of immortality where we either survive via our family, that's kind of like a part of us continuous exists, ethnic background, nation, humanity, the whole fucking biosphere. And then once all that's gone, basically, that's where a part of us that continues on in this world sort of dies. Kind of like the philosophy that built Final Fantasy VII. A lot of that kind of philosophy that a part of us continues in this world to like help it after we die which is true it's true like if you have a kid or if you're like a soldier and you helped your nation now it's like a part of you still continues on in some sort of it's like you have a stock in the world like, you invested a little in the world, and now you own a small part of it even after you die. Kind of like that. Uh, it's kind of a weird way of saying it. But, worst case scenario, because all that's... Because death is gone, now it's sort of like this thing where those base values are also gone. So all that's left is yourself. That's the one thing you can sort of value, and maybe not even that. So, at that point, society will be really degenerated and shit. Because there's no basis for value than, other than maybe yourself, and a lot of things also sort of fall apart. Institutions that are apparently motivated by the desire to see a part of you continue on, and also to extend your existence to and the other people's existence you want to see continue on because that's a reflection of your own existence continuing on 
i.e. a military or something of that nature. And once that's gone, it's sort of like, what's the point anymore? And I guess you can see there's still a motivation to continue existence and building civilization because if you build and lead a civilization then that's like a plus and a perk for you and it sort of help you with reproduction but I don't think now that's as important as it was maybe back then back in more older times so it's like not even that applies so then what can we apply what can we think of to help the world be a better place uh, after what post death era post fear of death and mortality um, well post mortality best case scenario would be that we can finally envision our society without the fear of the principles of idiom and things like that breaking it down. What that'll mean is that any civilization, since there's more than one civilization, there's Western civilization, the classical antiquity, Roman civilization, Eastern civilization, just these little civilizations you can finally get people that build the full project, not just have it come to a climax and then decline. So basically, any alpha nigga, any leader type that wants to see his full realization of his idea of civilization, he can see it, he can get it. And it doesn't have to be at its closest perspective and then degenerate into something else where a new civilization will replace it. Now you can finally get to see it all the way through for the principles of idiom destroying it. So it's kind of like how once you get a f try to really understand and see how you can get what you want and then eventually it's gone. That's sort of like the problem of mortality then once you see the best version of yourself or understand how to reach that point it's sort of gone in front of you and or maybe even not just the best version of yourself but or everything around you but just like the best version of anything really like you wanted to work to see this, you wanted to work to see what you really wanted to do, what you really wanted to see and how to do it. Once you get that, then it's like, it's gone before you can see it at its very best. So you kind of reach this climax point, which we see as the illusion of the best when it's not, and then it just goes down from there. The principles of idiom sort of tears it down and shit, and it's kind of messed up, so... If we do find that code, if we do crack the code and find immortality, then forget the Ubermensch, forget all that shit. We basically have either an opportunity for immortality to end our own idea of immortality, what we use to create immortality in an emotional and sort of functional way, a spiral energy of immortality and the actual realization of it destroys it, kind of like John Lennon's Imagine, or we can have our best version of our societies and our civilizations and ourselves without the need to basically have that come to a climax before we reach that point and then the principles of idiom destroy it. So that's kind of this video in a nutshell. I like to think that it's a pretty interesting video. It's 
kind of like what I have to say, like, best case scenario, worst case scenario. I'm leaning on worst case scenario, but I also, like, hope best case scenario also how happens elsewhere. Like, maybe Western society gets imagined, Eastern society gets to see its best version of itself without the need of a... Felt the need of a um, the principles of idiom to bring that to climax before it reaches its actuality and tear it down, and maybe the possibility of seeing basically doing that without the need of an Ubermensch. That's basically my sort of thought. Without the need of an ubermensch, without the need of something like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Odds are it isn't, but I hope it gets you thinking that at least it's an interesting thought. Because if I can at least get you to realize it's kind of interesting if you think about it, then it's not going to be for naught. Because... I know some people, like, they say that, oh, without death, life's gonna be really boring and shit, but it might not be. It might be either really fucking bad, like, imagine where you don't give a fuck about things like family, ethnic backgrounds, or nations, or a lot of other things like that, a lot of social things you, like, lose value in, even yourself, or... Maybe you get to see the full realization of things. That could be interesting. Alright guys, so peace, my guest.